Ladies and gentlemen, please join me on this journey uh, to a health destiny with five points that are easy to understand. First of all, this fellow Salvatore Fraschinella was um, a 65-year-old New York executive who was uh, as, uh, facing bad times because he had three cardiologists who felt that he was too risky for the bypass surgery. And he was getting worse on a dozen pills a day, couldn't walk two blocks without severe incapacitating pressure in his chest, and he was desperate. He came to a health program that I gave, though, and things changed for him. He was uh, hopeful. I said, I believe you can get off most of your medicine if you will follow uh, what I suggest. And he uh, talked to his, one of his cardiologists about it who said, you'll die if you do. And uh, I think he outlived his cardiologist. He lived another 30 years, from 65 to 95. And uh, that's an example of how I believe the body is designed for self-healing. Just like cuts, burns, bruises, broken bones heal, so will the body mend the, the disease process if we harmonize with natural laws. But uh, the th uh, number two view of this is that medical care is not health care. It's really disease care made so by prescription drugs and the process when uh, we, the, I have one teacher who said that he was graduated from Harvard Medical School and they told him that half of what we're teaching you is not so. We just don't know which half. Well, I'd like to suggest that the half that is not so good is number one diagnosis because uh, they, they can measure and scan and do blood tests and x-rays and all that and tell you a name, but they don't know the cause. The medical textbooks books when I took internal medicine said unknown etiology for most of those diseases whether it's arthritis or colitis or something else, they just don't know the cause. They can identify risk factors. Sadly, they don't call them the cause. You know, if a person smokes and you're at risk for uh, lung cancer, they don't say it caused it. <laughs> well, I think so. And the, the bottom line is that we need to identify true cause and deal with it, but the drugs, that's the part two of medical care, do not address the cause. You can eat a high cholesterol diet and plug up but their, their uh, treatment may lower the cholesterol in the blood, but it doesn't really get, you know, if we're, if we're eating the diet, why not just stop the diet? You know, change, eat less cholesterol, and we would be better off than a drug that might give us adverse drug reactions. Because I have the medical literature on this. This one here, bottom one, shows that the JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, in 1998, tax day, April 15 said that there was 106,000 deaths from adverse drug reactions and the definition of that is properly prescribed. Uh, it wasn't a bad dis prescription and it, the person took it according to the prescription but somehow people just react badly sometimes. And the next uh, article just above this is the Western Journal of Medicine and it says uh, uh, the first study from JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, was in hospitals the second, you might wonder how many die outside the hospital. That's June of 2000, the Western Journal of Medicine, and 199,000 died. So put them together. Inside the hospital, outside the hospital, makes 305, and medical care at that point, 20 years ago, was the third leading cause of death. But then, another study published uh, almost 10 years later, in September 10 of 2007, reporting on a period of time that you can see right here from 1998, that was the JAMA article, for seven years until 2005, said that the adverse drug events, the deaths, increased 2.74-fold. So multiply 305,000 times 2.7, and medical care is number one as the cause of death in this country. They're not saying that, and there's no more studies. They're afraid to look at it, I think. They don't want that out in the news. But the bottom line is that uh, drugs can kill you, uh, and along with uh, the greed of doctors to do surgery and medical error, because the adverse drug reactions are non air they, they got the right medicine. So all of this said, bad situation, why would we want to go there? I want to share with you what true health care is. This is point number three, and uh, Breslow. Dr. Breslow, Dean of UCLA School of Public Health, did a 10-year study, federally funded, found seven simple health habits good for a 30-year advantage. Okay.
that's uh, more than medical care could ever give you. And basically, if we do these habits, uh, they have the 30-year advantage as compared to people who break all the rules, like smoking, drinking, obesity, and so on. But uh, it did not. This study did not look at specific foods. This was before the Framingham study reported on cholesterol. If you include cholesterol, you can reverse heart disease. This is the U.S. News and World Report around 1990. Okay, so uh, it's possible. It's being done, and cardiologists like Dean Ornish, that article was featuring him, California cardiologist, or Dr. Esselstein, Bill Clinton's cardiologist from the Cleveland Clinic wrote the book on prevent and reverse heart disease. And we can do that, but uh, not everybody is, uh, you, you just don't hear about it, but go to the YouTube and look up these doctors' names and watch their video. It's ex excellent. So, we've covered four steps. Medical care is not health care. Adverse drug reactions make it a leading cause of death. True health care involves health habits. And if we address the diet specifically and include the right uh, parts of it, we can, uh, we can enjoy great health. Sometimes it's hard to sort this out. When I was in executive health at Loma Linda University, I had one, car one executive say that uh, sugar bothered his joints. I had another executive tell me that cheese bothered his joints, and a third one said meat bothered his joints. These were smart men. They'd, they'd figured it out. But when I got headaches, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't see a relationship. Uh, I, I, but anything I ate, it didn't give me a headache as far as I was concerned. But uh, I even went to the uh, neur neurologist who taught medical students across the campus, and I said, is anything I'm eating or drinking the cause of these headaches? He said, that would be very rare for my type of headache. I later learned he didn't know what he was talking about. When I left the university and went into practice with five other doctors, one was an allergist, and people drove hundreds of miles to see him. So one day I said, how many people with headaches can you help? Oh, he said about 9 out of 10. I said, test me. And he drew some blood from my arm and told me that I was allergic to uh, gluten and wheat and uh, pasta, pastry. I loved it. I was overdoing it. Actually, I, I guess I'd become toxic to it. I didn't think I was allergic at, uh, because when I ate the, the cupcake, I, I didn't get a headache. But um, when I left it all out, no more headaches. And the way it works is that if you become allergic to something and uh, you don't understand the cause, uh, when you go in and out because of s exercise is good, sleep is good, sometimes you don't get as much sleep, sometimes you eat more wheat, uh, it, it affects that you go in and out of tolerance and you get headaches at different times. But the most likely time I got it was Monday morning because I took sandwiches Monday through Friday to work but on the weekend, my wife would give me other things, and I was going through withdrawal just like a smoker goes through withdrawal. <laughs> they don't get sick when they smoke. They get sick when they don't smoke. And by the way, in this program, we're going to be talking about, and uh, a little later, tips on quitting smoking. When I was at the University of Arizona, we had 150 people taking this uh, Stop Smoking program. And over 100 on the fifth night, it's a five-day plan, uh, fifth night they had not smoked 100 of them had not smoked in the previous 24 hours. Most people can quit if they do this. I had a mayor in a little town of Missouri say, Doc, I've tried many times. This is the easiest I've found it. So we have tips to help you stop smoking. Think how much money that will save your company. If your company is paying the health care, actually most companies pay about 80-some uh, percent of their employees' health care. The employees ask to pay a small part of it. And this is big bucks for bypass surgery care of diabetes. And by the way, when I'm speaking of diabetes, i got to mention here uh, Miriam Iwawaki, a friend of my wife's who uh, had a stroke, did have diabetes, went into a nursing home and called begging us to get her out of the nursing home. They're killing me, she said. She was uh, on a dozen pills a day again and uh, doing poorly. When we, we rolled her into our home in a wheelchair, couldn't walk and poorly responsive, but stopped the medicines. Her blood sugar in the nursing home had been upper 200s, lower 300s. <laughs> but uh, in our change of diet and what we did, it's, uh, uh, this morning, by the way, it was uh, in the lower 100, below, it's 150 and below is what we like. Uh, good stuff, basically. So um, that's not as perfect. It's still diabetic, but uh, on no medicine, <laughs> when she was on a bunch of pills in the, in the nursing home, doing worse. So. Yes, we can do that, and why not? 
uh, end time care is really the place to look because uh, you know sometimes in midlife people taking medical care look about as uh, well off as the people that are taking their own health care and being captain of their own ship as Dr. Esselstyn says we can do that but if you uh, take a bunch of pills and you get closer to the end of life things look differently if you have a bag of pills the luster of life is gone you know it's just uh, grim stuff and my worst nightmare in an emergency room was what a little lady with a bag of pills because I had no clue as to what her problem was I would just treat her symptom and say see your doctor and that's what everybody that's the game everybody's playing really um, because uh, you don't know what's going to happen when uh, with all these drugs and so I would like to suggest uh, uh, medical care has a high cost in terms of end, the end time game. You know, games are sometimes won and lost in the last two couple plays. And uh, people go into a nursing home, can stand in a hallway and fill their diaper staring into space and say everything is okay. And that's not the way I want to go. I, I, I believe that we can know what's happening and be uh, alive and well. Ken Cooper's, he's the Dr. Ken Cooper, who wrote the book Aerobics, his mother, he says, was in her 90s when she went out for a, a, her exercise on a Friday, didn't feel well over the weekend, and died on Monday. No nursing home, no drugs, no nothing, you know, just a great testimony of how to go. And we can do that. We can be in charge of our own system. We can, uh, it deals with quitting smoking, drinking, there's another habit that many millions of Americans have, and if you have headaches, if you have trouble sleeping, if you have indigestion, if you have uh, fatigue or, or trouble with your nerves, uh, there is uh, something that I've got to help you with in a few minutes in this talk. But uh, we'll take a break for right now. Thank you for uh, considering these things of how we can live well and be on a better health destiny without the medical care which can kill you.